As the Reform in Law Award Chair, I enthusiastically and wholeheartedly helped select the book, Making Your Case, The Art of Persuading Judges, as the book of the year in law. Our next special guests are the co-authors, Supreme Court Justice Antonin Scalia and Brian Garner. This work was selected because of its enduring effect on lawyers who are involved with litigation. Its advice on how to prepare for and effectively present a case is unique, well-crafted, and a must-read for aspiring legal writers. It lives up to its billing as, quote, combining the practical wisdom of an incisive Supreme Court justice with the learning of a renowned writer. We have fashioned this portion of the program around an interview format. I therefore ask that our award winners, Justice Scalia and Brian Garner, join us and that Bill Press now proceed. All right. Good evening, Justice. Good evening, Brian. Uh, and we're delighted to have you here this evening. Thank you for joining us. Making your case the art of persuading judges. So I'm not a lawyer. I'm a journalist of sorts. So I've been taught to ask always the what, when, where, why, and how, and get to the basic questions. Justice Scalia, why did you write this book? Why did you want to write a book about it? persuading judges? Well, any, anyone who has been a judge for any amount of time uh, becomes more or less exasperated at the, uh, <laughs> at, at the, uh, the errors that, uh, that lawyers make in their presentations to the courts, both written and oral. Uh, I thought it was worthwhile and, and not only uh, a boon to the practice, but also a boon to the bench to try to eliminate some of those errors. And my thought was that it was, right. uh, um, there's a lot of literature on how to improve advocacy, a lot of articles, but uh, the advice was so scattered, uh, the really good advice was so scattered that nobody had ever pulled it together in a very brief and cohesive way, um, the way I thought could be done. and. Uh, that Justice Scalia was so wonderful in working with to, to, to bring that together. At first, we thought it was going to be simply um, kind of a restatement of advocacy, didn't we? But it, it ended up having so, a lot of original ideas, I think. Mean. Well, it, it's hard to believe that there are any new, new thoughts. You know, it's, well, ever since Aristotle, <laughs> ever since there have been judges, there have been people giving lawyers advice about how to persuade judges. So it really literally goes back to Aristotle or Hammurabi, for all that I know. And, uh, you know, it's hard to believe that there's anything new to be said, but as it turns out, at least in our distinctive uh, American system of law, there, there well, were some new things. To if, in fact, you felt a need to, to give some advice to, to, uh, to lawyers for making their case, you must have seen some examples of cases that were made not so persuasively. Oh. <laughs> Is that too much to assume? <laughs> Indeed. And, and, uh, it, and not just I, as I say, any judge. Uh, any judge who's been on the bench for a while wishes that, 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 that he could render two decisions. One, for who wins on the law, and the second, for, for who wins on, on the art of advocacy. Because very often, you, you, you have to give the decision to uh, a lawyer who has done everything possible to lose the case. <laughs> and it's, uh, and it's rather exasperating. You know he's going to go back to his client and say, well, Sam, we got it for you. And it was gotten uh, despite this fellow. <laughs> Can't you grade them, like A through F? I would love to do it. <laughs> <laughs> and Brian, how? The two of you are so busy leading two different lives in two different parts of the country. I mean, how, how, did, you do, how, how did you collaborate on a book like this? Well, fortunately, Easily? I, it, it was a wonderful collaboration. It was really the first collaboration that either one of us had done. Although, I guess you said it reminded you of your days on Harvard Law Review. 
with I, David uh, Curry. Uh, yes, I had been, uh, th there's a section of the Harvard Law Review every year which is called Developments in the Law, and that is, uh, they, they commit about five of the members of the review to that, so you work closely with four other people to design the whole thing. But that, that was the only other instance of really working closely with somebody else. In writing, writing by committee, but and this was I, a small committee, but. It was a very small committee. I traveled to, to Washington a lot to do training for law firms mm -hmm. and government agencies, and so that made it possible for me to take an extra day here and an extra day there to, uh, uh, to work through it. We ended up probably spending about 80 to 100 hours side by side. Once we had a, a good draft, it took us about three months just to come up with an outline. Mm -hmm. And then we would write, uh, actually he, he Justice yeah. Scalia asked me to assign him certain <laughs> sections to write. Mm -hmm. and what we decided to do was I would write the same section as he would simultaneously, as if it were the final version. And then it would be up to me to, to, to put the two together, to meld them into a section. But uh, that made sure that we were really uh, using our full creativity, both of us, and not merely reacting to the other's draft.